Early July 2020, my dad and I left Western Port Bay in Victoria, planning to sail up Australia's east coast to Queensland. But first, here's a quick content warning. If you don't enjoy scenic landscapes and cute wildlife, this film is not for you. Also, you may see images of my dad in budgie snugglers, so parental guidance is recommended. Could do. There's a lot of dolphins here. Look at them all. Pretty stoked to finally be on the water. The first few days were perfect with calm seas, gentle winds, and friendly marine life. After rounding the lighthouse at the bottom of the prom, we were officially on the east coast. Unfortunately, the water was still an icy 12 degrees and wouldn't improve until we got closer to the East Australian current. Even still, not much can detract from the magnificence of a place like Refuge Cove. It's high time we introduced our protagonist, my dad, David. His main role, the skipper, but also playing the electrician, the mechanic, the baker. Yes, that's coming out now. Bloody black. Fashion icon and general handyman. Thanks, dad. In Port Franklin, we resupplied and said goodbye to our friends Warren and Kathy, who had accompanied us from San Remo. They gave us some final advice before we left for Lake Entrance. You have to time the flow of the tide, not the height of the tide. That way the waves and the tide are going together and you don't get the waves standing up. We came to appreciate the importance of this later, but that story can wait for part two. 
So to time our arrival at the lakes, we left Port Franklin at 3 in the morning in some pretty gnarly conditions. Most of the trip was spent either sleeping or, in my case, seasick. Despite the 10 foot waves breaking either side of us, we successfully surfed across the bar that evening. However, our beginner's luck was starting to wear out and a few days later, Dad got us stuck on a sandbar, where we waited for two to three hours for the tide to lift us free. Don't text and drive, kids. About a week later, we caught a 25 knot tailwind and a following sea out of the lakes to make a break for the New South Wales border. Those days sailing can feel pretty long. Um, mild seasickness pretty much prevents you from doing any more than stare out at sea. We did try trawling, however, but it was basically the beginning of a succession of failed fishing attempts lasting the rest of the trip. As it turns out, we can only catch things that can't run away. Eden marked our successful escape from Melbourne's winter, as well as our escape from Victoria's COVID-19 lockdowns. But to get into New South Wales, we had to spend two weeks quarantining on the boat. Quarantining on the boat basically meant we couldn't set foot on land, but thankfully we could continue our journey north. Montague Island was the last seal colony that we'd encounter, so bear with me for another 56 seconds of seal appreciation. The last days of our quarantine were spent in Jervis Bay, where the look but don't touch policy was getting pretty difficult. So the end of quarantine couldn't come soon enough. It meant being able to walk further than the 13 metres of deck, and finally being able to speak to people other than each other. Just sit 
Let's say. But we didn't anticipate what came next. Would you like to recount the last three days for my documentary? Well, early Saturday morning when we went to continue our adventure, we were unfortunately confronted by the fact that Vetus had failed us! <laughs> we went to start the motor and the engine oil alarm went off. On further investigation, we discovered that a once in a million failure had occurred in the engine where the pressure relief valve in the oil system had stuck closed and we had extremely high oil pressure in the old engine, the new engine. We spent the next two days hiding behind the point in Jarvis Bay, protected from the wind, while the wind speeds gusted at 60 knots and nasty seas blew all over us. And then we finally got in contact with the engine manufacturer dealer people, and so they are attempting to send us bits and pieces to repair the faulty engine. So stay tuned for the next episode of Vetus Engine Failure Number One. Without an engine, we couldn't charge the batteries or heat our water. We also had next to no manoeuvrability, so we hung out in Jervis Bay waiting to hear back from the mechanic. Uh oh. Eventually, we were dragged by Marine Rescue onto a public wharf in Huskisson. While they may have cracked our thinking in the process, we were sheltered from the weather and at least we could charge the batteries. So we had a few extra weeks to explore the bay. <laughs> because you definitely didn't catch him. Show us what you found. We were given the green light to use the engine just in time for the locals to run us out of town. So after our two week delay, we set off. I make a confession. Before this I had zero sailing experience. Dad had some but ultimately we didn't really know what we were doing. So of course in classic amateur fashion we unexpectedly found ourselves in 30 knot winds which is about 60 k's an hour. It wasn't comfortable but somehow I still managed to sleep through most of it. But we made it to our destination, even if we did almost lose the sail in the process.
At the end of August, we finally sailed into Sydney Harbour. My first thought was, why the hell would anyone choose to live in Melbourne? Not only does the harbour offer good diving, national parks and iconic landmarks, but there's also a number of conveniently located seaside alveys. Turns out that the best time to visit Sydney is during a pandemic. The city was completely deserted and we have the whole place to ourselves. After our city experience, we left Falella in a marina and made our way to the Blue Mountains, where we spent three days hiking the six foot track. Well, my laptop is now out of storage, so I suppose that brings me to the end of part one. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. Please join me next time when things start getting tropical. Come on, how not you get this tree? And don't take any more money with you. Oh, he wants to stay. We should keep.